Poison Control is a game that for the longest time has been shrouded in mystery. What is this game about and what do you even do in it? These questions have been on the minds of a lot of people, with myself included. The very first trailer showed a beautiful minimalistic scenery with the contrasting colors of Hi, we're Blackpink. This was followed by people slowly but sadly drowning in their own poison until, out of nowhere, an innocent looking maiden purifies a poison and thus brings hope in a hopeless situation. And after playing the game I can say that this is pretty spot on with what the game is actually like. Well, not what the game is actually like, but what they are trying to go for. Because the reality is, while this concept is beautiful and well portrayed in the trailer, the execution of the game sadly isn't. Stick around as I will show and tell you everything you need to know about what this game brings to the table. If you're new to the channel, my name is Rini and I cover Japanese and anime style games through reviews, guides and showcases. If you like what you see, help me out by hitting that like button and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more in the future. Now without further ado, let's jump into the review. Poison Control is a game developed by Nippon Ichi Software and more specifically the same development team that brought us Penny Punching Princess and the Princess Guide. The premise of being in a desperate situation and forming a personal hell around that was inspired by Shoujo Jigoku, also known in English as Hell Girl. This novel was written by Yumino Kiyosaki and even saw an anime adaptation in 2005. The biggest difference between the two is that Shoujo Jigoku focuses on the dark side of humanity and how something like revenge is tempting but also self-destructive. Whereas Poison Control focuses more on understanding mental problems and breaking through delusions through reflection and acceptance. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's take a step back and look at where it all begins. You are a silent protagonist that wakes up in hell. And just like you don't know what's going on, neither does a cheerful soul that you meet called Poisonette. Unlike you, Poisonette doesn't have a body and unlike Poisonette, you don't have any powers in this world. The only thing that's clear is that you both need to reach the gates of heaven as this will answer all your questions. In order to work towards its goal, you become two souls in one body, which they call soulmates. This is the start of a relationship where you do everything together but only one soul can be in charge of the body at any given time. And this extends to the gameplay. Poisonette can manifest as a gun replacing your arm so you can defeat enemies and alternatively you can have her soul fully take over your body in order to purify the poison lakes with her special power. Hell is split up in multiple stages that each revolve around a soul that is slowly drowning in its own toxicity. By saving them, you prevent them from turning into monsters and more importantly, you are rewarded with a silver ticket. Collect enough of these and you will be granted a passage to heaven which is unsurprisingly the final destination of your journey. The souls that you seek aren't just your regular souls. After all, these are the people that ended up in hell instead of heaven. The reason for this, and also why they are still trapped in their own toxicity, is because they were delusional at the time of their death due to having unfulfilled desires, strong negative emotions or a mental disorder. As you can imagine, some of their stories are clad in a dark and heavy tone, but rest assured that the game doesn't just overflow you with negativity and shock value. Some stories are more lighthearted and have a comedic effect and I think they struck a good balance between these two styles. Each mission starts with a radio broadcast where the two lovely hosts fill you in with some details of the individual's hell that you will be visiting. This information isn't really useful for the gameplay or anything, but it does give you some context about the story that you're about to see. And honestly, hell is a lonely place after all, so it just feels good and reassuring to hear some other human voices, even if it's over the radio. The stages themselves all work in the same way. You need to find things called thought forms, which allow you to either talk to the soul trapped in a cell, or show you memories of the events that led up to them being trapped here. Most of this is done through writing, with the occasional static art image for a dramatic effect. It works, but it doesn't always deliver the impact that I think they were going for. By finding all thought forms, you slowly but steadily work your way towards a root cause of the problem in the form of a personal object that can help you save their souls. While the state layout is very linear and lacks variety, I do appreciate that the decoration gives you a sense that you are really in someone's personal hell. Let me give you a few examples. The first stage is about a girl who is having trouble with school and the whole stage is in a school setting. Later on you find someone who is obsessed with a mascot and everywhere you look, you see that mascot dude. 
And finally, my favorite and most relatable one is a person whose life was a living hell because of hay fever, and a stage was just filled with a bunch of angry setup trees. Seriously, I don't scare easily, but that stage was messed up. The path to the different thought forms is filled with enemies and poison that both need to be cleared. Using Poisonet's gun mode, you can defeat the monsters and by having Poisonet take over your body, you can clear the poison by walking over it. You can do this in two ways. The first is by creating a full circle which also clears the poison within the zone and this is the quickest way to remove a lake. The second is by walking in a line to quickly create a path. This can be really useful if you're fighting in a zone with the purple annoying poison that keeps on respawning. The gameplay is at its most fun when you can combine the running and the shooting to clear an area. For instance, running in a circle around an enemy that is standing in a poison field not only clears the poison but also deals damage to the monster. You can then take out your gun and finish it off. Similarly, you can try to lure a bunch of enemies in a poison lake, stun them by shooting their heads and then run a circle around them to finish them off. Playing like this is satisfying and you'd think the game would encourage this playstyle but it really doesn't. Instead, to clear most areas you need to do one of two things. You need to either clear the poison or defeat a certain number of enemies. The faster you are, the higher your score will be and the more money you will get as a reward. And with that in mind, ask yourself, what would you do when a game tells you to clear 80% of the poison lake? You'd naturally go out and do that as soon as you can by dodging all enemies and focusing on just the poison. And what would you do when the game tells you to defeat certain targets? Well, naturally you would make your way over there and take out the specific targets as soon as possible for a better score and reward. Separating these playstyles feels bad and I really don't understand why they chose to do this in a game where two souls in one body are supposed to work together. The same contradiction extends to outside of the specific combat arenas. Clearing poison lakes rewards you with experience, money and is the key to finding special items to unlock new weapons. Because of this, you will be spending a lot of time clearing poison lakes without doing any fighting whatsoever. At the same time, in a lot of stages the enemies just keep on respawning infinitely even if there's no poison to be seen, which gives us more fighting without clearing poison. I could go on about things like having to fully empty your ammo clip to reload or if you get too close with a weapon your bullets will go through them, but as bad as they sound they're actually minor annoyances in contrast to the fundamental gameplay problems that I've just described. Leveling is something that passively happens in the background, and pretty much all your actions in the stage give you experience, whether it's clearing poison lakes, defeating enemies or finding items. Each level gives you hidden basic stats such as health points and power, but there are also some special stats that enhance your strength even more that you obtain by bonding with Poisonette. Every time you find a special story item or obtain one of the silver stickers that I mentioned before, you have a heart to heart with her where you can pick one of three dialogue choices. Each of the choices you take will improve your level in one of the different stats and while I like the idea of growing together with Poisonet by bonding with each other, I think it's stupid that certain choices level certain things. For instance, I really want the upgrade for an extra weapon slot but that requires me to pick specific sentences that level just that set. So what's even the point in providing these options if they end up hindering the gameplay and the progression I want to follow? It feels like fake freedom of choice because one way or the other they are limiting the experience of the player this way. The weapon variety is decent. The different guns, also called toxicants, can be split up in four categories. You have guns that shoot regular shots. As you can see, these are not hit scan as they take a while to travel to the enemy, but because the enemies just move towards you in a straight line, it isn't really much of a problem. Then you have shotguns which unsurprisingly deal more damage up close. Just be careful that you don't move too close to the enemy though, because as I mentioned before, the bullets can actually pass through the enemy that way. Then there are bomb shots which explode and hit multiple enemies at the same time. The first one that you can unlock looks like a water balloon that slowly flies over and then detonates on impact. These are homing projectiles though, so that's a good thing. And finally, there are two guns that are laser shots, which, in contrast to the regular shots, go faster and in a straight line. Toxicants can be unlocked by finding three special items in the personal health stages and can be upgraded up to five times to increase their power, ammo clip size and add certain effects. These upgrades do cost money, but as long as you thoroughly clear the different stages, you should always have enough money on hand. There are also a few weapons based on monsters called Delirians that have a whole different feel to them, but the ammo for these is pretty limited so you cannot use these too much. So yeah, there isn't too much variety here, but I think it's plenty considering this game only has 27 stages to clear. 
At the end of the day, poison control really only has one problem, but just like the poison that you're trying to cleanse, this problem violently oozes into all aspects of the game, and this problem, my friends, is a lack of cohesion. There are some good ideas, but the way they have been executed is often bad or counterproductive to what they are trying to achieve. Because of this, there is no solid foundation to keep the different aspects of the game together, and this can feel like a mess. I've extensively talked about how this shows in the combat and the leveling system, but it goes beyond that. I think Poison Control has an extremely beautiful 2D art and character designs, but 90% of the time you're looking at outdated 3D models from a distance. The writing in Poison Control is superb. Within the span of a single stage, the authors manage to make you get to know the characters and emotionally connect with them. But once the stage is over, that's the end of it and you move on to the next person. So even though the characters and stories are memorable, they are quickly forgotten and overshadowed by new memorable stories that also end up becoming irrelevant in the overarching plot. There is a shop in the game run by a demon with great assets and an even more interesting personality. But seeing as you only unlock weapons during missions and upgrade them effortlessly via your menu, you only go there once to buy a single item that you cannot use until the last few missions. With that said, this game has two redeeming factors for me which are the overarching plot and Poisonette. The story starts very slow but as you progress you learn more about why you ended up in hell and at the same time you run into a rival set of soulmates whose story you explore too. In the final few levels the story progression kicks into a high gear and genuinely leaves you interested in knowing what the hell is going on and how everything ties together. There are three endings and the one I got first was a beautiful conclusion to the story, which brings me to Poisonette. I love this girl and no you perverts, I'm not just saying that because she shakes up and down when she talks. Without spoiling specifics, as your bond with her grows and you both experience the often horrific stories of the souls that are stuck in hell, she really grows as a person and overall has a great and positive attitude. The heart to heart sessions you have with her are very endearing and it feels reassuring to always have her by your side in this grim and lonely place. It is because of these two aspects that I was still able to find joy in a game despite all of the flaws that it has. Poison Control did not live up to the expectations that they set with their early trailers. And while I don't regret playing the game, I am not convinced that what it does offer justifies a price tag of $40. I can't be the only one that was really curious to this mysterious game and now that you've seen what it's actually like, I want to hear your thoughts as well. Write them down in the comments down below and let's talk about it. If you want to see more reviews like this, make sure to check out my channel. If you have any further questions about this game, don't hesitate to ask. And on that note, I want to thank you all for watching, and until next time.